I'd like to welcome you all back to the show. Um, before I forget, please remember to like, subscribe, and definitely, definitely comment. I have with me today a good friend of mine, Scott Albert. How you doing, Scott? Pretty good. How you doing, Ari? Thank you for asking. Good. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So my name is Scott Albert. I was born in the East Coast in Philadelphia, but I grew up in San Diego and Los Angeles. And I've kind of lived everywhere. I'm a bit of a nomad. So I, I grew up in San Diego. Then I went to college and got my degree in Los Angeles. Then I was up in the Pacific Northwest for a while and in uh, Seattle and then also in Oregon. And then I was lived in Israel multiple times. You know, when I was when I was in my early 20s, I lived in Israel for about uh, four and a half years, a little under five years. And then just recently, I lived in Israel for three years and just moved back to the States in uh, in 2020. And now I'm on the opposite side of the country. I live in the south. I live in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been here just about a year right now. Wow. Very cool. That's a that's a colorful story. I didn't even know all that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a bit of a gypsy, so but it, but it's, it's good. It's, I enjoy it. No yeah. man. Yeah. So um, so the thing is that um, I give you credit because you are the first man to be on the show. So it's a little gutsy. Oh, I feel privileged. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just I want to jump right in. I mean, you know. The singles world is something different to everybody, and there are things that are, you know, troublesome, things that we feel we can improve, and I just wanted to have you on here and kick around a couple of thoughts with you, like if there's something that comes to mind or something you were thinking about bringing up since I invited you on. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to kind of expand upon that. So I am uh, 59 years old. Th that's my physical age. Mentally, I'm probably, I'm probably like the way I interact with people. Most of my friends are not my age. So most of the friends that I have are, I'd say for the most part, most of my friends are like in their in their 30s or early 40s for the good part of it, just because I've kind of sync and align with with their kind of values and and uh, overall youth. You know the you know right. the, the way their outlook on life is and everything versus someone. I'm like one of your older friends. I'm 49. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You, you know, you're like, but but you also right. So you're very youthful, and that right. and, and that's what I I find myself attracted to friends that that are youthful and have are full of life and like to get out and enjoy life and do different things. So that's why I really don't. Kind of, I mean, I have a few friends that are my age, but that's for the most part why I kind of gravitate to people that are a little bit younger than myself. Right. So I'm recently, I'm recently a single. I had, I'm in the process of, uh, and I've gone through a divorce. So I'm kind of new. So I think I have a kind of interesting perspective as well as far as dating. So, you know, I'm new to that, and probably in the last three months. Or so, I've probably just started to date again, and I've been out on, I guess, a total of maybe like five dates, six dates already, where I just met for drinks. You know, we just sat down and talked uh, over drinks at a at a restaurant or at, at a bar or whatever. So, yeah, so I think I have a fresh perspective for everything. How do you meet these uh, ladies? So, one thing. So, I my daughter. She created a, a profile for me because I, I initially had put a profile on JDate, but uh, I found out that I really wasn't attracting like the the kind of person that I was, you know, looking to connect with really in a, in a great manner. So my daughter was like, "Dad, you know, you have to uh, expand your horizon." She said, "I like Bumble because Bumble, the woman, like I as a man can swipe through." And, you know, you can put your religion in there and you can, you know, so you see, find someone that's Jewish and Bumble and you're like, all right, I like them. And you like that person. So that automatically you can't come start a conversation with that person. That woman has to like you back first and she has to initiate the conversation and come back with the first comments before the man can respond. So 
so I, I like that. I like that one, right? Because it shows the woman already has vested interest in you, right? So if she's as she's going to come back to you as a man and say, hey, listen, you know, I saw your profile. I saw you liked it. And I am interested on you. And, and she has to be, you know, well, well, you know, typically in, in society, the man's the one that, you know, has certain, uh, you know, it is supposedly take the first move to, to do, you know, to, to start the conversation, the various things and social norms. But this way, it kind of like puts that, throws that back in the hands of the of the uh, woman that's looking at your profile, and she has to be the person that actually take the lead on the on kind of the, the conversation and the relationship. Start off with a confidence boost. That's good. Uh, absolutely. So I like that. So it, so it's very nice. One thing I I've had kind of discovered whether it's Jade Dave or Bumble or the apps that I've kind of honed in on that's really helpful is, you know, and obviously with help from my daughter, because she's 25 and she's in the dating world, <laughs> you know, and she she knows like the dynamics of everything better than I know the dynamics of everything. But one of the things that's interesting is I look through the profiles if I'm looking to you know, going through for different people that I could be interested in. And I look at what their interests are automatically, right? I, you know, obviously, you know, other than being Jewish, I look at what their interests are. So I want to see automatically that we have some commonality, some interest that I can kind of ping off of. So if that person comes back to me, whether it's on Bumble or whether it's on J, they, they say, hey, listen, I saw your profile. I'm interested in you. Automatically, I know that that person, their profile likes A, B, and C, and then I can jump back and ping back on it and say, oh, I saw that you grew up in San Diego. That's where I'm from. So automatically, I have a common point of commonality that I can start the conversation with, you know? Right. So it sounds like you're uh, you're really enjoying the, the uh, dating site scene. You're really jumping in, which is great because I'm getting a lot of, um, you know, deflection from people who feel that the... Uh, it's it's frustrating that as you get older, you know the the real world scene is is more for the younger kids, and we're left more to the uh, to the dating sites. But it sounds like you're really embracing it, and that that's an awesome attitude. No, no, absolutely. And then one thing, so like I said, I've been on a handful of dates, so roughly like four or five dates in three months. But out of those four or five dates, uh, even though they didn't work out, they went very well. So like. The first day that I went on, we went out for a drink and we sat and talked and we talked for like, what, two and a half, three hours. And it didn't work out, but it was it was a really nice, pleasant conversation. I mean, and that's something, too. Right. Like, you sh I mean, this is just my opinion only, but people shouldn't have like expectations set so high. Right. So you should say, all right, I'm just going to meet this person. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to just be myself, not put up any walls, any fake facades. And we'll see if something happens. If it happens, that's fine. And we go from there. But from that, it's okay. At least I I had a date. I had a drink. I enjoyed myself. I had human interaction. And it's all right if it doesn't work out. So the, But I had one date that I went on that I went for a drink. Friend. What's up? And you made a new friend. A absolutely right. Absolutely. And you, and you never know where those friends, And it's great for networking. Uh, that, and that's the way I look at it as well, 100% already, is that it, it, you never know who someone that you meet knows, what industry they're in. And if you make that connection, it might not work out romantically, but then you might be talking about work or about if you are an entrepreneurial, you have entrepreneurial spirit. And then, oh, I know someone that, that does this. And you're like, oh, really? Uh, I have experience in that. Can you connect me? And they're like, sure. Because if they like you, then they'll obviously connect you to their network and, you know, then you're going to. You know, it could lead to abundance and more than just dating, right? It could lead, lead to financial abundance, to, you know. Right. Uh, you know, so so the, I, I look at it as a whole different experience. And the recent date I went on, probably like about a month ago, I went on a date. And the first date, the conversation, we sat there and we talked five hours. And we right. had we had three drinks and we sat and talked five hours. So, and, and my whole thing is, I, like I said, like I was just giving the advice there. I go into it like with, I go into the meeting with low expectations. I don't expect anything out of it other than a drink and a conversation. And we see where it goes. And I just try to be myself, right? I try to be myself. I try to lit instead of being the one that talks the most, I try to listen a lot. 
and and then one and then I try to talk about what the other person's interested in. And then I try, and then I also try to active listen as well. So if she says, Oh, you know, like I grew up in San Diego, I said, Oh, great. So what part of San Diego did you grow up, up in? So that way she knows that I'm listening to her as a male and I'm paying attention to her and her and her and her opinion and conversation is valid to me. Right. The, you're bringing up uh, two very, very good points. I think that it's very key for other people to learn from this. First of all, having low expectations doesn't mean you're lowering your expectations of your future partner. You're lowering your expectation of the experience so that you can only be pleasantly surprised, which is a great attitude. And I, I know you have that attitude in general. And second of all, um, I think guys get carried away and they get excited to want to share and they want to talk, talk, talk. When I think it's a very good strategy when dating to allow the female to not allow that sounds uh <laughs> shut your mouth and listen and then fill the uncomfortable silence moments with all those thoughts that you were saving in the back of your head so now you've taken a conversation where you looked a little bit needy and and you you're you're sort of um challenging each other for that time to to talk and you turn it into you know, it's almost like a work of art. You listen to the person and then you fill in the gaps. And now you've taken the same amount of conversation and, and you've turned it into something uh, great instead of something, you know, not as great. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And then like we were just speaking, you know, previously, right. If it doesn't work out, that's fine too. Right. I mean, not everyone's compatible and and that's okay, but who knows where it can lead to as far as a friendship or connections or something you're involved with. So I think that's all very important. And I just go, when I go out on these dates, I just go out to have a good time, right? That's the way I look at it. I'm going out, I'm meeting someone new, and I'm just going to enjoy myself, have a drink, and just relax and see what happens. And, and, and one thing I try to do too, which I think helps, and I think women appreciate is on top of the you know listening to them and letting them speak and then you know talking about what they interest so basically giving equal time to what you have to say and then giving them equal time to speak as well i think it's it's very important to make sure that your walls are down right to not the not try to be judgmental first of all because you know no, no one's the way i look at it myself is we're all imperfect no, right. no one's, a, there's no such thing as a perfect person. So I, I keep that in mind, no matter what that person's saying that I'm going out with, not to judge them, because who am I to judge you? And and everyone's experience is unique to them. So I, I go with a, a non-judgmental attitude and I leave my, I take my walls down and I, I share openly, right, about my life. And I think they like it. And a lot of things that I found in these different dates that I've gone on these is a lot of women like like weird stories, right? So if you have a really cool story that's kind of out there a bit, they want to hear that, right? Because they like that. It shows you a little bit, you know, you might think, oh my God, I can't bring up this story. It's like a first date and it's really crazy or out there, or they might get the wrong opinion about me or the bleep. But I think they appreciate that. that when you go on the date, they appreciate that because that shows more of your personality and who you really are, whether you're quirky, whether you're more serious, whether, you know, whatever the situation was, it happens to you. And I think, I think the, the women enjoy that because it shows them that you're being open with yourself to them and showing them like who you really are as a person and not putting up a wall or hiding from them. You know, I think that's great. That's great advice. As long as you live out of town, but yeah, that's a uh, <laughs> very exactly. point. I, I really I'm glad that that I, I have you on here because I think that you really shared some really good pearls of wisdom. And um, I want to thank you for for giving me the time. I really appreciate it, man. No, no, it's it's it's, it's all good. I I enjoy coming on there. You know, like I said, it's a brand new world. Right. I mean, you know, right. I, I, I'm 59 and I haven't dated for years and years and years. So I'm kind of getting accustomed. And one thing I've learned as well, whether you're on J-Date, whether you're on Bumble, whatever, you know, is if you're doing the dating apps. I mean, obviously, there's people that have matchmakers as well, and that's fine. Whatever works for you, whatever, you know, you know, it depends if you're just 
you know, if you're dating with intention and you want to get a matchmaker, you're looking to get married real quickly and then sit down and, you know, like someone in Chabad would be married most likely in like three to four months out after dating, right? You you would date, you would meet your match through a matchmaker. And when you found that person that you were interested in, then you would, you know, move to the engagement process. And the engagement process, and a lot of times, is very quick, you know, especially the, the more religious you are as a Jew, you know, it, it could be a matter of months, you know. Right. Well, you're, you're cashing on fast. You're doing a great job. You should be giving lessons. Um, <laughs> if anybody happens to be interested in Scott, um, the information is in the description of uh, how to reach out. And of course, like I always say in these shows, comment, comment, comment. Scott will be watching the video if somebody wants to chat with him or, you know, otherwise you could send me an email. The information is below. But uh, I think uh, I really I'm really glad you came on. I, I thank you again. Thank you. Scott. Hey, thanks for having me, Ari. It was a great conversation and I always love visiting with you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. Have a good day.